Good morning. My name is Zuri. Today I will be giving a presentation on the basics of research data. This presentation will attempt to answer such questions as What is research data? What is the role of data in the research process? How is research data created? Who creates and uses research data? What are the typical research data formats? How big is a research data set? What does the term, metadata, mean? To better demonstrate the basics of research data, we will also be visiting a few researchers. This will enable us to have a good look at their research data. Well, what is research data? Research data is all factual evidence which is collected or generated by researchers in the course of their work, while they are studying people, things or events. The aim of collecting data is to expand existing knowledge. All researchers collect or generate data. Here are some examples. Medical science. War history research. Agricultural studies. Aeronautical engineering. Computer science. Library and information studies. Environmental science. Climatic studies. We can see that all scientific disciplines create and deal with research data. It is important to understand what the aim of collecting research data is. The aim is to expand existing knowledge. Research data is used to answer a research question. But what is a research question? A research question is the most critical part of research. It guides the whole research process. Our intrepid researchers will explain the research questions and data collected. Hi. I am Simon, a medical researcher. My research aims to answer the question, does eating fat make a person fat? To answer this question, I need to collect data. I collect data from five groups of human subjects, my patients. These five groups would follow different diets for 16 weeks. The diets differ with regards to the fat content of food ingested. The data collected from patients would include full body photographs and body fat measurements. I would then look for a correlation between diet followed and weight changes. I am Zach, an agricultural scientist. I am interested in answering this research question, can a new pharmaceutical product known as salbutamol treat blue tongue disease? To answer this question, research data is required. I am collecting data from three groups of cattle, a group given the medicine when displaying symptoms, a group given the medicine as soon as rainy season starts, and a group not given the medicine. Data will show in which group the disease was less likely to flourish. Did you know that cows love dancing? Hi, I am Joni, and I am a student, busy with a master's degree in library and information science. I want to know what are the challenges and obstacles experienced by students, using mobile devices, such as smartphones or tablets when accessing and using this university's library services. An online survey is to be completed by all regular users of the library services. This will provide me with the research data I require when answering my research question. I hope that the concept of a research question, and how it is answered by research data, is clearer now. Now that we know that research data is an integral part of the research process, we might wonder how it is collected or generated. Data can be collected using a variety of methods. What is being studied, and how, will determine what data will be produced. Data can be generated by doing interviews or surveys, or by doing experiments or clinical trials. Or by observing and recording well defined events. These are just three of the most common data collection methods used. Let's have a look at what a few researchers have to say about their data collecting methods. 
I am Pamela, and I am a war historian. I collect data by interviewing war veterans. As a medical scientist interested in the role of fat ingestion on body fat, weight loss or weight gain, I would collect data via interviews, taking body fat measurements, and taking full-length photographs. I collect data by taking samples from animals, instrument readings when using electronic equipment, and by accessing their veterinary histories and records. As a researcher in library and information science, my data is generated when library users complete an online survey, asking them about the library service challenges and obstacles experienced. So they would be able to complete the survey anytime they are online. They could be at home, or in town somewhere, or even while being bored in the classroom. I am an environmental scientist, and study the natural world around us. Currently my interest is desert studies. To collect data, I take photographs of the environment, I collect small sand samples, and make video recordings of dune movements. Hello, I am a climatologist. I do climatic predictions for the next 50 years, up to 2060. I use available data supplied by weather stations, and use this to create climatic models. What a varied lineup of researchers. Did you notice something interesting about the data used by the last researcher, the climatologist? He mentioned that he uses data supplied by weather stations to do his research. We call this type of data, this data generated by someone other than the user, secondary data. Data that is originally collected by the researcher, is called primary data. So, in short, secondary data is data from other sources that has already been generated, while primary data is data collected for the first time. Let's recap what we have learned so far. We now know that research data is created while researchers are studying people, things, or events. Research data is generated in order to answer a research question. All researchers, and all scientific disciplines, make use of research data. A distinction can be made between primary and secondary data. Research data can be collected or generated using various methods. Experiments, observations, and surveys are a few of the more common methods used. An important conclusion reached by now, is that research data can represent different content. As a result of this, Research data can exist in many forms, formats and sizes. It can exist in the form of text files, numerical data, images, drawings and photographs, materials and samples. I think it is time to visit our researchers again. Let's see which data formats they use. My data is most often video files, as I do interviews which are video recorded. I also have research data in text format, as I transcribe the interviews afterwards. When I say transcribe, I mean I am making a written copy of spoken materials. I am transcribing the spoken recording. It ends up being a transcription in some kind of text format. The video recordings are saved in MP4 format, sometimes I make audio recordings and save in MP3 format, while the transcriptions are MS Word documents. So if I were to go to a folder containing my audio files, and open one of the files, by clicking here, then we can open an audio recording of an interview, saved in MP3 format. We will now listen to part of an interview I did with a war veteran who was a fighter pilot in 1945. Well, right at Pearl Harbor was a time in the history of this country which has been no other. Everybody wanted to jump in and serve. My medical research data comprises images. My laptop contains the digital photos taken of patients. These photographs would be stored as JPEG images. I also have data in the form of audio files, as I record the interviews I do with my research subjects. 
Then I also have small amounts of numerical and text data saved on spreadsheets. The audio files are usually stored as MP3 files, while the numerical data end up as Excel spreadsheets. Let's have a closer look at what the data looks like. If I open my images folder, and click on any one of the JPEG image icons, it would show a JPEG image, in this case, a full-length photo of one of my patients. The image portrays the patient at two different phases of the trial. My research data comprises sand samples, digital photos, as well as video recordings. My photographs are most often TIFF files, while the video recordings are saved as WMV files. Here are a few examples of Desert Storm photos saved as TIFF images. If I open my images folder and open a few of the TIFF images, I would see this TIFF image. Here is another TIFF image. And this TIFF image too. I use secondary data, mostly numerical data in the form of spreadsheets supplied by other researchers as well as the Weather Bureau. By using their data and my own climatic software program, I can create massive climatic models, which is actually also a data format. My data is delivered to me in the form of spreadsheets. The software of the survey tool I am using, SurveyMonkey, automatically generates these spreadsheets. So if I were to go to my spreadsheets folder, and click on any spreadsheet icon in the folder, the spreadsheet would look something like this. What we have seen so far is that research data can exist in many forms and formats. While most data nowadays are digital, data can also be non-digital. As is the case with materials and samples, artwork, and older non-digitized maps, photos and books. Research data formats can in some instances be discipline specific. An example of this is meteorology, where the gridded binary, or grid format is used. Sometimes, Research data is uniquely instrument specific. An example of this is the data generated by the Olympus confocal microscope. Another feature of research data, its size, may also vary widely. Some data sets, for example a small data set in text format, would be less than 1 megabyte in size. At the opposite end of the size spectrum we find huge data sets, such as data sets generated by the Square Kilometer Array Telescope. Images and data sets created here, are in the order of petabytes, with one petabyte being 1000 terabytes, of information. A petabyte of music would require 2000 years to play. It's time for another recap of research data concepts discussed. We have learned that research data can represent different content. Research data come in different forms, formats and sizes. Common research data types are text files numerical files, images, video and audio. Research data are stored in various formats, for example, MS Word documents, PDF files, MP3 and MP4 files, WMV files, JPEG images. Data formats can sometimes be discipline or instrument specific. Data set sizes differ, from a few kilobytes up to several petabytes. The next research data related topic we will be discussing is metadata. Metadata is a set of data that describes and gives information about other data. So, metadata would provide information about a research data set held by a researcher. Here is a simplified example showing metadata added to the concept of an apple. The name of the fruit, its season, weight, uses and origin have been added. This next example shows a photo taken in space, with the metadata added to the right of the image. Metadata fields include aspects such as title, description, author, photo size, ownership, date photo was taken, and image type. Metadata is a very interesting topic that needs a longer discussion. For now, let's just say that adding metadata assists in data retrieval, and in managing ownership rights, to name but two benefits. We have now reached the end of this introductory tutorial on research data. A short quiz will now follow. Let's see how much you have learned. True or false, all research disciplines make use of research data.
Which of the following are research data types? Audio, video, images? When a researcher collects his own data, would that be considered primary or secondary data? Which of the following is a typical data set size? 500 kilobytes, 10 megabytes, or 3 terabytes? True or false, a historical orchestra musical video, which is stored in old VHS format, cannot be regarded as data. False. It can be used as data, it can provide information about the stage setting, for example. Or it could be used as data when studying the change in video quality over time. Which statement is true? Metadata describes research data, and assists in finding data. Metadata is a synonym for research data. Metadata is a term used when a researcher does not generate his own data. Thank you for attending this tutorial on the basics of research data. For questions and comments, please contact me at lpatterton at csir.co.za.